So short, very short report with uh, lots of illustrations, simple for non-scientists, non-specialists to understand, but at the same time to have it uh, not too much criticism from our uh, scientists, uh, colleagues, scientists, which was challenging. So I think the first round was too complicated. So then it was rewritten completely in much simpler words, and it became too simple. So we had uh, lots of criticism from our colleagues that it's too simple, you know, simplicity. So then we start to work on it, and I think it is balanced right now. So it's balanced pretty good. So it's still written in very simple language. However, all um, mentioning of, of uh, scientific terminology and uh, generally uh, description of permafrost and changes in permafrost and importance of these changes are pretty scientifically correct. Well, permafrost is um, any earth material which is at or below zero degrees Celsius for two or more consecutive years. Well, the fact that permafrost uh, contains significant amount of carbon which is now excluded from carbon cycle because its uh, material is frozen, uh, decomposition rate is minimal. Uh, the fact uh, that, it, um, that this amount of carbon uh, in permafrost is significant was, was known for, for many many years. Uh, there is nothing new in, in this. However, uh, the estimates, the more or less, um, well, more or less up-to-date estimates were obtained just very recently. Post publication 2009, uh, and then after that several other papers, which really estimated the amount of carbon sequestered in permafrost, and that amount was, and the number was really big. So that's kind of impressed the scientific community. And only after that, uh, and it, like again, I, I said it was in 2008, 2009, this, this publication, only after this, um, the modeling community started kind of pay attention to, to, this, um, to this fact that this thawing permafrost, which uh, everybody believes will happen, if climate will continue to warm. Uh, it's just physically uh, based pro process and there's uh, no surprises. Um, but the effect of this thawing permafrost on carbon cycle, uh, the, the importance of this effect uh, was recognized only recently because of the uh, publication of these of this numbers of how much carbon is sequestered in permafrost. And uh, global climate modelers, of course, they have many other problems. So it's not only uh, this thawing permafrost, carbon from thawing permafrost is not included. There are many other uh, feedbacks which are not included in the models. So they, they have to develop their priorities. And uh, until very recently, uh, permafrost dynamics was not uh, among these priorities. That's why it was not included so far. But at present, during the last several years, many uh, groups who are uh, involved in these uh, climate models develop them. Uh, they are really paying attention to that and they're trying to include uh, this carbon and permafrost dynamics in their models. But it's very, very beginning and there is many uncertainties so far and it's very far from something which will produce solid results. This is, this is exactly why it's so worrisome, because we have no control on that. Um, if we have at least theoretical control on emissions from human activities, or at least theoretically we can you know, say we can control this, we can change emission or burning rate of, of uh, fuel um, but uh, and, and because of that we, we, we still we feel like we can do something
to change it if it's it will be necessary. In case of thawing permafrost, if permafrost is thawing because of warmer climate, there is no way to control it or to stop it to prevent it. If climate will be warm enough for permafrost and start to thaw very widespreadly, so then there is no control. It's it just it just will go by itself. So far, um, this uh, permafrost monitoring uh, network is mostly scientific based. So uh, most of the data what we are collecting are coming from uh, scientific projects, which are funded by national funding agencies. In the United States it's mostly National Science Foundation, but not only uh, USGS uh, fund. Uh, this similar kind of research and other um, and other countries also uh, mostly funded through uh, scientific projects which are usually very short term uh, three years maximum five years so uh, the the system or network of permafrost observatories which we develop is pretty impressive it's still very far from ideal it will not be ideal of course but uh, there is big gaps, especially in Siberia, also central Canada, uh, big gaps in observational stations. However, it's still, it is producing some results which are allowed us to say what permafrost is doing globally. Uh, but uh, the problem is this kind of scientific, scientifically based network is its uh, sustainability, how to sustain these measurements. Uh, because if uh, this scientific project runs out of money and no, no new project will be funded, so we will we'll have gap in data because no agency is responsible for that. So the idea is to make national uh, governments uh, a kind of you know, feel responsible to, um, to sustain, to maintain these networks somehow. Well, of course, first it's, it's funding, but it's not only funding, it's, it's, all, it's all infrastructure needs to be developed. Some kind of similar to what is a weather service, for example. So there's weather stations which are maintained by um, governmental agencies. So probably it is possible to do something like this in uh, Fort Permafrost monitoring as well. Yeah, of course, of course, um, in Alaska, uh, people live with permafrost, or sometimes on permafrost, <laughs> for those unlucky ones. <laughs> um, and in some locations, like in Anchorage, it's just, you know, it's just a few patches of permafrost, so mostly it's no permafrost, there is no, not such a problem. In Fairbanks, it's already kind of at least half and half, maybe more half, uh, on permafrost, so it's already more problem. Uh, and for buildings, for roads, especially for any kind of infrastructure. And if you move farther north or north northwest, uh, there are some villages which are suffering from degradation of permafrost right now. Uh, there is some discussion about uh, relocation of these villages, and it's not only because of this coastal erosion, uh, lay, uh, the uh, uh, ocean coast or river banks erosion, but even in the uh, Settlements like Selvik, for example, which is not on the coast, there is some big problem with thawing permafrost and affecting the uh, uh, whole infrastructure of the village. So, um, and uh, the people who live there are definitely concerned, and it's probably getting the, the largest concern right now what will happen to uh, in these areas. Uh, now, and Government, of course, also uh, there is concern about it as well. So um, I would say there is lots of work to, needs to be done, and um, and uh, uh, the, the the major thing is that what we see right now it's it is just the beginning. So what people are experiencing right now and saying, oh, how bad it is. So it will be much worse. So <laughs> so that's the problem. 
it all depends of course on rate of changes in climate and uh, what we know about it now is mostly based on these climate models projections and those projections are saying that uh, the major actually acceleration of warming will, will probably happen sometimes in 20 30 years so it will be still warming up to that time but um, on the less degree uh, and rate of warming will be relatively small uh, however even this small rate will will already impact permafrost in, in many locations but probably the major changes if we uh, trust this uh, projections will happen sometimes in 2040 um, 35 somewhere there but it's all based on on these projections which are not perfect of course uh, trust this uh, projections will happen sometimes in 2040 um, 35 somewhere there but it's all based on on these projections which are not perfect of course and there's huge uncertainty there uh, for example with uh, CIS uh, projections were that uh, well uh, decrease in CIS was projected of course but not in the, that rate which we are uh, um, seeing it right now so what is happening right now it's much faster than it was projected so the same could happen in this form of process. But um, at least on the basis of what we know now, I think we still have uh, maybe 10, 15, 20 years to, to address these questions, maybe. Um, changing in permafrost will change uh, surface conditions. Um, for example, um, forests can turn into swamps and bogs. Uh, or um, it could be actually turned into much drier conditions as well, depending on, on settings, uh, kind of environmental settings. Uh, lakes can grow in the, uh, in the north but disappear in the uh, south. And actually the, the rate of changes now in lakes shows that even in the, within the continuous colder conditions, uh, mostly lakes are disappearing right now. Uh, so changes of this uh, uh, environmental conditions for wildlife will be very significant and of course there will be some win winners and losers um, of course uh, ecosystem is more adaptive than infrastructure I would guess so probably ecosystem will adapt uh, more smoothly however again there will be some some losers and some species could be suffering from, from these changes um, and some of them maybe will you know, welcome all these changes so, but it will be different it will be different and uh, the uncertainty of what it will be is huge again that's why there is lots of efforts right now to understand what changes in permafrost how they will affect uh, ecosystem how they will affect vegetation how they will affect this uh, species uh, composition and how they will, uh, uh, how, how it will affect um, animals and, uh, and some of them very important for, for humans who live there in Alaska and, and not only in Alaska but in, you know, in the north so that's that's big question and it's 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 scientific question as well so how we can predict changes in environment and ecosystem because of changes in climate and permafrost Well, everywhere where permafrost has ice, you know, significant amount of ice. And uh, there's big regions in Alaska where permafrost is very icy. Uh, of course, there is some more stable permafrost with colder conditions like on the North Slope. And changes there will be probably uh, more gradual right now and not so immediate. However, there is some regions, especially in the Northwest of Alaska, uh, where permafrost temperature is very very warm now, close to freezing point, but at the same time there is lots of ice still in permafrost, and I already mentioned this Selavik uh, village, but it's not it's just one example. It's all this northwest corner of Alaska is very 
um, close to, to big changes. And I think that's, that's one of the hot spots where we should you know, pay very serious attention to what, what is going on there.